Oh boy, this is going to be a weird video for me. This might be the closest thing to journalism you will ever see on my channel. Now before I get into the actual topic, I wanted to preface a few things. One, this video is about an open letter animator Shane Newville wrote against Rooster Teeth's treatment of the, Roos of the show Ruby after Monty Ohm passed away. If you are not a fan of Ruby, or you've never watched the show, or if you don't really care, this might not be the video for you. What this video is not about is not about bashing Rooster Teeth directly or making any allegations or claims. This is about the letter, what it means to fans, and the questions we need from Rooster Teeth. Number three, Ruby is Rooster Teeth's intellectual property, and they are within every legal right to do what they want with their property. I'm not going to make any allegations about legality or whatever because that's not the issue. As far as I know, Rooster Teeth has not done anything illegal, and at the worst, they did something unethical. Number four. And this is just a random number four, but I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with the Ruby fan base for being as neutral as possible on this issue. Or at the very least, they're willing to look at both sides of the argument. And this rarely happens, and I really wish more fandoms did it, but you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. So without further ado, let's just get, it, let's get on with it. Now I will begin by giving a brief summary of the letter. It's 36 pages, which is a doozy, but I have left a link in the description for people to read on their own. I recommend that you actually read it before watching the rest of this video, because it'll give you some context. So Shane begins with his life story and how he kind of found Monty and Rooster Teeth. And giving his life story gives the whole letter some context, and tells us just how involved Shane was with Monty and Ruby. And it shows us that he wasn't just some rando animator, but worked really closely with Monty Ohm, and by extension, Monty's vision. And it shows just how important and passionate this person is, which I think is gives him some credibility when it, com when it comes to the later parts and the points that it makes in this, in this letter. Now, I mean, when he goes on about his um, his kind of involvement, his passion with working with Monty, the only thing I can say about that is it makes sense. Now, I can just imagine if I were to find the person who inspired me to better myself and kind of become better and end up kind of being a mentor to me, and on top of that having the privilege to work with them as closely as Shane did with Monty, it just comes as no surprise. It'd be a dream for any of us. It'd be a dream for me. The important parts of this letter, and by important I mean relevant to us, is when Sheena, Monty's wife and production partner, uh, had the door slammed in her face by Rooster Teeth. Uh, Shane quoted Rooster Teeth producers or some execs as saying, just, as, just so you know, Sheena has absolutely no business whatsoever with any part of Ruby. And that's a quote from the letter. And here's where things get dicey, because if, if, if this is true, and I'm stressing, I'm stressing that, if this is true, and how, that's how they worded it, and that's how things went down, I got two words for his teeth. Dick. Move. And this is my first point of contention when I have with Rooster Teeth, uh, that Shane has brought up in his letter. If your show's creator is dead, in this case, and the next best thing is his wife, who has helped produce the show, uncredited as I might add, and has input that Monty shared with her and no one else, why, in the love of God, would you push her out? You see, to put this in perspective, I mean, if a company is selling a product, which is what Rusita is doing, they're selling an IP with Ruby, and they have a valuable asset that could only help make it better, or as close as to what Monty had in mind. Why would you deny yourself that asset? And so that's one of the main points I have with Rooster Teeth, and one I would definitely like an answer from. But, you know, there's more I want to talk about. And going back to the letter, over the next four months, Shane notes these drastic changes that happen within Rooster Teeth from how they centralize files to the staff they bring on during Volume 3. Now, this stuff is mostly just industry practice, and that is made, you know, for convenience sake. And I don't think it's really meant to ruin Monty's process. If anything, it kind of just slowed things down and were kind of a change to what, th what things, um, you know, how they usually worked. Uh, this seems to be more of a workplace disagreement, but does get my attention, but what does get my attention is the outright refusal 
to have some vital assets to Volume 3, mainly how Pierre Nikos' death was to be handled. To give you the skinny, Jean was supposed to witness and be the cause of Pierre's death, which not only would have been a lot more traumatic, but a stronger character moment for Jean. Now, according to Shane, this was a doozy for him to defend and try to keep in, in from a number of reasons. The first being that the stronger version of the scene uh, would have resonated, resonated more with the fans. And I mean, I mean, my buddy Austin, who co-hosts the podcast with me, felt the sting of Pierre's death worse than any of my other friends. But to imagine the ending that Monty envisioned, I think it would have just torn him apart. And I'm not going to lie, I might have shed some tears if the ending was done Monty's way. And that's what brings us to the big topic on, on my mind. Is Monty is it Monty's way or the highway? I think the biggest takeaway from Shane's letter is the importance of integrity when it comes to your work. And as a writer, I can sympathize with that. I, mean, I hold my work with at least some form of integrity. However, there are, there are things that are bound to change when dealing with a large-scale animated show like Ruby. I don't think it's unreasonable to say that even if Monty was alive today, that things might not be exactly as he planned. Still, when a man like Monty was, has brought Rooster Teeth so much and given them an IP with such, with such passion, and his own style and everything, all the big shebangaboo, it's no surprise if, if he and his peers treat it with respect, almost sacred, if you will. There is clearly an ideological difference between Monty, Shane, and RT in the Rooster Teeth Corporate, uh, which is where the controversy comes from. Rooster Teeth is all about the bottom line and making as much money as possible, which is nothing, which is something that isn't inherently bad, but when dealing with an individual's dream, tensions can rise. That being said, Shane does potentially bring up some valid points with Rooster Teeth's unethical practices. Uh, which have been confirmed at the time by Catherine Zulch, the voice of Glinda Goodwitch, and some other voice actors that have worked on the show have kind of brought up their own points, confirming that whatever Shane has written in this letter, it is all true. Now, here's the thing. Does this validate the letter? Yes and no. While I do think this input from, from, from Rooster, Teeth's, Rooster Teeth staff gave the letter some weight, and that should it be take it should be taken seriously. I'm still waiting for Rooster Teeth to respond in order to fully cover the topic and cover both sides. Now I'll be making an update video if and when Rooster Teeth makes a proper response. I say if and when, because at this point Rooster Teeth needs to respond. If they remain silent on this issue, then that only gives Shane more credibility. And it only just makes it more true. It's never a good idea to remain silent on matters of controversy. So, what would I like to hear from Rooster Teeth? Well, I doubt they will admit any wrongdoing. I think that they should try to do some damage control on the matter. Whatever they say to the effect of, this was not up for discussion, or some elements were out of our control, or something, some corporate jargon that the lawyers have written up, it would at least be something. It might be weak, and it might be a kind of a crap argument, and I might not believe it, but something is better than nothing. What I am more curious about is Sheena, and why was she shut out of production when she had so much to offer the company? Again, they could refute Shane's version of, 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 went, of what went down, and it's entirely possible that Sheena left on her own. But without hearing her side or what Rooster Teeth has said, um, I, I'd just like an explanation on that. Having the next best thing to Monty working on the project seems like a win-win for everybody. And if she was forced out of the picture, I need an explanation for how the company could make such a stupid, stupid, stupid decision. So the big question on my mind after reading this letter was why this is so shocking to hear. This is no doubt, this was, there's no doubt in my mind that things like this happen all the time with large animation studios like Disney, Pixar, Sony, you name it, they've done it. And I think it's shocking to hear such corporate bullying from Rooster Teeth, a grassroots gaming and animation company that's only been around for about 13 years. I think what is happening here is a small, homegrown company growing up to be a soulless corporation, and that corporation being full screen, which was bought out, which bought them out two years ago. 
If Shane's letter is to be believed, then I think it is safe to say that Rooster Teeth does not care about its IPs as just a means to an end. Now, I don't think I'd be surprised by that, and it's, you know, hard to care about something that isn't yours compared to the owner. It was clear Monty loved Ruby, and so did Shane and everyone else uh, who seemed to work with him. As far as Shane's concerned, Ruby died with Monty, and after reading all the changes that they did and kind of how they treated it after his death, again, assuming this is all true, then I'd have to kind of side with Shane. Ruby died with Monty. I mean, and when you look at the uh, what the cuts and how they treated it, and there's really just only two two things for me, unless I can get a confirmation from Rooster Teeth, which is they either don't care about Monty's vision or how he kind of dealt with his own baby child, or they are incredibly incompetent. And I don't know which is worse, personally. Which brings us to Monty's torch. The analogy used at the end of this letter the torch Monty created with carried with Ruby that he now carries and thinks all fans should carry if they care about Monty's vision. I think this is the rallying cry Shane has ended with. If we are to believe this letter and that this whole situation gets any worse, that that's what people will be using. Hashtag Monty's torch. Of course, that is going to be saved for later. And if this situation gets any worse, I'm not going to be using the hashtag, and I don't really condone anyone else using it yet. Like I said, this is my initial reaction to Lettergate, which some people have been dubbing this because, of course, every controversy on the internet has to end in gate. Otherwise, it's just not a controversy. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, now what this means to me as a fan, and what I think Rooster Teeth needs to do to save face, I mean... A worst case scenario, I just stop watching Ruby. I just stop watching all Rooster Teeth altogether and all their products if this gets any worse. Uh, all I can say is I just hope that doesn't happen.